People usually see a spinal specialist because they're having neck pain, back pain, or an arm or leg pain problem. They often don't know what's causing it and they're concerned, but the severe pain in those areas can be the presenting reason for most people to come visit. The discs we talked about earlier are ligaments, and just like if you tear a knee ligament or a shoulder ligament, you would get shoulder pain or, or knee pain. If you tear a back ligament, then you get pain where you tear that. In, in the neck, you'd have neck pain. In the low back, you'd have low back pain. If the tear is big enough and a piece of the disc breaks off, just like the model shows here, and pinches a nerve, then that would cause pain in the path where that nerve goes. So if the nerve is a, a nerve that gives sensation down the back of the thigh, the back of the calf, and you pinch it, then you'd get pain down the back of the thigh and the back of the calf. That's classic sciatica. Sciatica is actually pain radiating down the back of the leg, the back of the uh, calf. People use the term improperly and will often say, I have sciatica when they're talking about just back pain. Back pain is not sciatica. Back pain is back pain. So if you pinch a nerve, then the pattern that that pain goes would be a radiculopathy. So that would be pain radiating from the back to the extremity in a path of a specific nerve. And each nerve that comes off goes to a different area. The higher nerves go to the front of the thigh, the lower nerves go to the side and back of the thigh and the back of the calf, and the bottom two at L5 and S1 are the ones that actually do the top and bottom of the foot. So depending upon what level of the spine you pinch a nerve, you'll get symptoms in different distributions. If you have a disc herniation in your back, that disc can pinch the nerve. If you pinch the nerve, then that affects the function where that nerve goes. This is just like if you have a garden hose and you kink it around the corner of the house. If you kink your hose, the water doesn't flow. Well, if you pinch a nerve bad enough, then that nerve won't function properly. And if that nerve is a nerve that goes to your foot and innervates the ability of you to pick your foot up, then you can end up with a drop foot or weakness in that distribution. At the very least, you can get pain or numbness in that distribution. If you have a hose that's kinked, you know that you have to unkink it to make the water flow properly. And that's often what we do at the time of surgery, would be to go in and remove whatever is pinching that nerve so that the water can flow properly or so that the nerve can function properly. First, we would try time, rest, exercise, medication, maybe even a steroid injection to decrease the swelling and allow that to happen. But if that doesn't work, then we would go ahead and microscopically go in and remove it or use laser surgery in some minimally invasive fashion, remove whatever is pinching that nerve to allow it to function properly or, as our analogy says, to let the water flow. The other analogy, which works very well for this also, is having a stone in your shoe. If you walk around with a stone in your shoe, your foot hurts. And maybe you wiggle the shoe a little bit and the stone moves and you can tolerate it for a while, but eventually it gets back to a part where it bothers you. And ultimately, you have to take the shoe off to make your foot feel better. And in essence, that's what happens at the time of surgery is if we can't get this calmed down to a point that you can tolerate it and remain out of pain and have normal nerve function, then we would go in at the time of surgery, minimally invasively, remove whatever's pinching the nerve to give it the best function.